Hello everyone and welcome in this new video where I will talk about Versa Network's SD-WAN appliance and how to integrate them with Microsoft AD and Captive Portals. So this is the lab I'm going to use to explain the Active Directory integration. On the left side, we have a laptop trying to get access to the internet. And in front of this laptop, we have a Versa operating system CPE. Once the HTTP requests get to the CPE, the laptop will be prompt with a captive portal. At this stage, the user can provide a login and a password and they will be relayed to a remote Active Directory. Eventually, the Active Directory will accept login and password, you know, approve the credentials. And only at this moment, the laptop and the user behind it will get a full access to the internet. So let's review what we need. First of all, we need an LDAP server profile and user group profile on the CPE to get to this Active Directory and send our credentials. Then we need a captive portal to collect the credentials. So this is a web page that will be presented to the end users. Next, we need an authentication rule on the Versa CPE to decide in what situation we want to authenticate the traffic. In our case, that would be for all HTTP and HTTPS related traffic. Next, we need a decryption rules and a decryption profile. Because if you think about it, the end user will be redirected to the captive portal when he will try to get access to the web. And in the case of an HTTPS connection, this won't be allowed natively in the HTTPS protocol. So we need this decryption profile. And finally, we'll also create access rules to limit what an Active Directory user can do on the internet. So this will provide us more granularity. All right, let's get started with the LDAP configuration. I have decided, by the way, to do this configuration directly at the branch level. So under the connector menu and LDAP, you will have to create a new entry named DC in my case. So this is where your Active Directory settings are located. So first of all, you must set a server type. Okay, so Active Directory in this case. Then you need to set the administrator's information. So the distinguished name and also the password to create this LDAP connection between the CP and the Microsoft ID. You also have to provide the domain name, which is versalab.com in my case, and the base distinguished name. So this is where your users are located in the Active Directory. Next, you need to provide some server settings like the IP address of the server, the port, which is 389 for LDAP, and finally, the routing instance on your CPE from which you would like to initiate the LDAP connection. So VersaLAN VR in my case, which is by the way, the LAN side of the CPE. So let's move on to the user and group profile now. Again, you will have to create a profile at this level and we will define two types of attribute. The group membership attribute that you can use in your access rules and more important, the user attribute. So this attribute right here, the username is very, very important. Why? Because it will change the user experience when reaching the captive portal. You have the choice between two attributes. The first one is the SAM account name. So if you go with SAM account name, you only have to provide your Microsoft login when reaching the portal. But you can also use the user principal name, which is by the way, a value we see more often in the configuration guide. If you do that, instead of the user account, you're gonna have to use the user email address. So login, followed by at, followed by the domain name. And that's pretty much it for the user group profile. Last thing we need to configure is the authentication profile. So again, you need to create an entry, which is name of AD in my case. Um, this profile will be used in the authentication policies. So you need to set your LDAP profile, name DC in my case, um, the name of the routing instance, again, LAN side, versus LAN VR in my example. And finally, it's not mandatory, but you can also set the left profile uh, to provide more visibility and get some login information in the director. All right, we can now get started with the SSL decryption configuration. 
the first thing we need to do in the object and key menu is to upload a key. Uh, a key on the director and then the same key on the appliance. So for this, you click on the upload file and you will have the opportunity to upload that key. The key does not exist on the director by default. So this is something you need to create locally on your own laptop or anywhere else. Um, for this step, I'm using OpenSSL. So let me give you the SSL command to generate a key. You can use OpenSSL followed by generate followed by the size of the key followed by the file name. Once this is done, the key will be available in the director and you will have the chance to upload the key on the appliance as well. So this step is mandatory. The same things need to be done for the certificate. So again, I'm going to click on upload at the director level menu and upload a new certificate, which again does not exist on the director. So for this, I will use the OpenSSL command to create a self-signed certificate. And again, you really have the choice at this step. You can create a self-signed certificate, which means that you are using the key you created earlier to sign this new certificate request, or you can have your own server certificate with your own CA in the back end. It really doesn't matter. But because this is a demo, I'm using a self-signed certificate. Once this is done on the director, you click on appliance right here. You click on upload. And at this stage, you need to be very careful because you need to bind the certificate you've just created with the key you created earlier. Once this is done, you can click on OK. The certificate is ready. We cannot take care of the SSL decryption mechanism. So for this, we go in next gen firewall and then we click on proxy profile. So this is the place where we will create the SSL proxy profile for traffic to be decrypted on the fly. So you will see it's very simple. There is only a couple of attributes you need to mention. The name of the profile, which is decrypt profile in my case. Then you need to click on SSL forward proxy and choose the name of the certificate you created earlier. And then you can click on OK. Now that my decryption profile is ready, I can go in decryption and policies and I will create a new rule. So the purpose of this rule is to describe what type of traffic I want to decrypt. So the name doesn't really matter, but it's mandatory. I did not set up any source of destination. Again, not mandatory. What's really important here is to describe what type of service I want to decrypt. And in this situation, I've chosen HTTPS, meaning that as soon as HTTPS traffic hit the CPE, I want to decrypt it using the certificate I created earlier. So this certificate and the binding of the decryption profile to these rules is done in the Enforce menu. So in Enforce, you must choose Decrypt and select the decrypt profile we have just created. Once this is done, you can click on OK. We can now move on to the Captive Portal menu. So remember the captive portal is this web page we will present to the end user as soon as it's trying to get to the internet. So to customize the captive portal, you need to click on this button right here. And the first thing you need to do is to set the SSL certificate we created earlier, CA certificate in my example. Then you must set a routing instance. So the routing instance is the LAN routing instance in my example, Versa LAN VR and you can keep the default value for the port, 90 for HTTP and 91 for HTTPS. Those ports will be used during the redirection. So for instance, if I'm trying to get to Google, I'm going to get redirected to the captive portal on port 91. And this is the reason why SSL decryption is mandatory at this stage. Once this is done, you can click on OK. All right, now that the captive portal is ready, we can go and create our authentication rules. So as usual, when you create a rule, you need to provide a name. The source and destination are not mandatory. I wanna keep it simple uh, here. 
what's really important is the services. Um, so I want to intercept HTTP and HTTPS traffic and redirect them to a captive portal. Be very careful with services. Uh, don't put any, don't put DNS, and don't put the captive portal port. Uh, otherwise, you will break the entire authentication and captive portal mechanism. So let me just put a note here. Don't use any, all right, because you don't want to authenticate any type of traffic. Don't put DNS, otherwise we will just break the sequence to get to the internet, all right? We do DNS first and then only HTTP or HTTPS. And don't use the captive portal port. That's a really bad idea. And finally, once you're done, you can enforce the rule with the authenticate using profile and select the authentication profile we created earlier. You can also put the default login profile to get some logs. Once this is done, you can click on OK. Finally, we will set up the last piece of the configuration, the security policies. So in the security policies, we will create rules to allow or deny traffic based on attribute, as we usually do. Uh, such as services, source, destination, protocol, and so on and so on. Except that in this particular situation, we will also make sure that the user is part of the organization using the user attribute. So I won't go into much detail for the rule number one and rule number two. Again, we do not want to interfere with uh, DNS traffic and the SSL captive portal port. Remember, port 90 and 91 something. Uh, what's more important here is the hot web rules. So this is the rules allowing traffic from the land side to the internet. I didn't set up anything for the source and destination, but for the service, I did set up HTTP and HTTPS. Okay, so the action is of course a nullo, except that this time you need to be a non-user, which means that before the traffic can traverse the rules, the CPE will make sure that we actually have an authenticated user behind this IP address to allow the traffic. All right, so you need to enable this knob, none, under the match user. Once it's done, you can click on OK, and we will be ready to test our setup. Okay, so it is now time to test the solution. On the right side, we have the user terminal, and on the left side, we have the CPE terminal. Uh, first thing I will do is making sure that we don't have any authenticated user yet on the CPE. So for this, I'm using the show org service with the name of my organization, followed by user identification live users. And as you can see, we don't have any authenticated user yet. So um, I will simulate uh, user connection, going to the internet and uh, look for the Versa Networks website. Uh, I automatically get redirected to the captive portal, which is a really good sign so far. So I'm going to put my Microsoft AD credential here, Sylvain, with my password and validate. All right, sweet. Uh, I get access to the internet. I get access apparently to the Versa Network website. So everything seems Okay, let's get back to the CPE terminal and type the same command one more time. All right, so we have some uh, extra information here. I can see that the user Sylvain is connected behind the IP 192.68.11.1 and I've used the AD authentication profile to perform the authentication. So we are in business. All right, this is now the end of it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.